life. Thank you for health. Thank you for a sane mind. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed. Thank you for the finished work on Calvary. Thank you for this opportunity to come before your presence to glorify your holy name. We thank you also for the intercession that took place this morning because we believe the intercession clears the place of all demonic assignments and clears it so that the work of God can be done without hindrance. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you for those who come to church on Sunday. Thank you for those who come early. We pray, Lord, that your presence will guide us and that in everything that we do, that you will receive the glory that you deserve. All these things we ask and we pray in Jesus' precious name. And all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, we're continuing with our subject, uh, Blood Covenant. Blood Covenant. Um, I thank God for your lives. Uh, yesterday, I was just reflecting with my family how grateful we are uh, for all that God is doing in our lives. We're also reflecting on something that we've been praying about. We're praying that God will inspire the people, that he will light the fire underneath our feet. When we came on Friday for feet washing, uh, there was very few people. It wasn't like in the past. In the past... A lot of people would come, but this past Friday was just a handful of people, uh, no leaders, you know, just a few people, and it was like, okay, what has happened? So we know that we've got our work cut out for us to pray that God cover our church, that God inspire our people, because uh, something has happened, and we don't know exactly what that thing is, but we're praying in Jesus' name that our God who sees everything will identify it and help leadership do whatever they need to do so that people are inspired to come to church. There's been a lot of people who've passed through these doors. Uh, there's been evangelists and people who've done work out there that has caused people to come to church. They've come for the service, but they didn't stay. So that, to me, is... And I have to apologize because even though I come to church and I want to be focused on one thing, just to come and worship God and get mine, but that's kind of selfish to think of it that way. You know, because even I was saying on Friday that the anointing that is here is so powerful, it's so it's so it's great, but the people don't see it, the people don't recognize it. And those who recognize it and who are consistent and faithful, God opens doors for them that you can't imagine. God opens doors. God does things every day, miracles, signs, and wonders. You know, not, not the big miracle that we're all expecting, but small ones. Those ones every day we see small miracles. They may not be small, depending on who you are. They may be actually very large. But we see them happening around all the time. And I know for me personally, it's because that I'm here. For me personally, I'm here. I'm here when the work of God needs to be done. I'm here. So I come and I get mine and I see what God is doing. And so for me, for my own personal life, I don't look around and get concerned because I'm getting mine. I mean, that's... That's all I should be concerned about. I'm getting mine. If you don't come, hey, that's on you. But in my spirit, I'm grieved because the anointing that is here is not just for us, a few of us. It's for a lot of people. And if they don't see it, what is it that we're doing wrong so that they don't see it? What is it we're doing wrong so that the Holy Spirit is not here? Because if the Holy Spirit is here, the people will come automatically. That's what I believe. So I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will restore whatever the canker worm, whatever the caterpillar, whatever the cutter worms have eaten from Christ's citadel, that our God will restore it, 
so that we'll return to worshiping God the way we always knew it to be, with the seats full, with all of us in one accord. I pray that the enemy will not succeed. He has succeeded in closing down a lot of churches. As a matter of fact, there's a faith community church that many years ago, Apostle and I went there to this church because they had a, a, a pastor's uh, meeting. And so, and I wasn't even a pastor in those days, but Apostle was training me. So we went together. Such a vibrant church, such an awesome experience. People worshiping God. Big place, huge place. Like, wow, very impressed. As a matter of fact, Pastor Mary went there for Bible school. That's where she attended her Bible school, Faith Community Church. So I drive by there the other day. There's a for sale sign. For, how is this possible? This place was awesome for sale sign. Oh, they moved to a smaller place. So you imagine this place where they had maybe, I'd say 3,000 seats. They had to move to a smaller place, a place that was vibrant, a place that you went and you actually enjoyed going there. But even they could not overcome this thing called COVID. So how about us? If bigger churches, vibrant churches, are closing down because of COVID, we're blessed that we're still open. Can I get an amen? We're blessed that we're still open because bigger churches than us have closed. We're still here. So when I think of that, that kind of tempers my disappointment when I come for an event that I would expect to be well attended and find there's a handful of people. It reminds me of what has gone on in the world. And I hope that we're praying together that this will be reversed, that the trend will be reversed, the trends of churches closing will be reversed. And I pray that you and I will be part of the reversal of this trend, that God will give us wisdom on what to do, what to say, so that this will stop. Because... If you look around, the enemy is winning. The enemy is winning. When you look at social media, you see all the stuff that people are sharing. You see all the media posts from people of God, from church people, people who are supposed to believe what you and I believe. It's amazing how we all believe different things. We all believe different things. This one is saying this. This one is saying this. There's a preacher. He's really cutting down other men and women of God. And, you, you know, we see this and it's very discouraging in the spirit. Where are we going? Where is this world going? You know, people are removing God from everywhere. Everybody's got their opinion. You listen to me, you listen to me, everybody. So many different opinions. So much confusion. So much confusion in Christendom that a lot of people have left it it's so confusing. This person, this person, who do I believe? Who do I follow? Whatever. Ah, forget that. Forget all that nonsense. So people have left the faith. But does that mean that God does not exist anymore? For you and I who are consistent and faithful in our service, has God changed? Is, are you, uh, has something happened? Has God changed? Has he, is, he diff is he different in his approach to you, in his response? Is he different to you? Same God. Same God. So why would we change? Why would we stop going to church? Why would we listen to the enemy? We know it's the enemy. Why would we listen to the enemy and stop going to church? Don't you know when you stop going to church, things change? Isn't that a fact? Don't you see that? I see people who used to come to church who don't go to church anymore. I bump into them, like, what happened to you? What happened? If you're in the presence of God, your life is supposed to be improving. If you're a praying person, if you're a Bible reading person, if you're a worshiping person, a praising person, your life is supposed to be improving. If your life is not improving, it is your fault. You're not doing something right. If your life is not improving and you're a praying person, 
you're a worshipping person. Something is wrong somewhere. Because as I'm a living testimony, since I started worshipping God, since I've been consistent in my praise, consistent in my worship, consistent in my church attendance, I see my life getting better and better and better and better and better. I'll never come and tell you, guess what? Life is tough. No, I'll never tell you that. I'll never tell you 2023 was a terrible year. No, 2023 was a blessed year. It was a good year. For me and you who are faithful. For me and you who are faithful. You can't say 2023 was a terrible year. No. 2023 was a good year. And I'm expecting 2024 to be even better. Can I get an amen? And we need to be a, an example. I can't say all these things if I'm not seeing them. If I'm not seeing them, because then I'd be a hypocrite. I, that's the last thing I want to be is to be a hypocrite. And I want to be transparent. Because at the end of the day, it's not about me, it's about the Lord. The Lord sees everything. The Lord sees all my imperfections. You might look at me and say, well, Pastor Dan, holy man of God. I hear that and sometimes I'm even embarrassed. Because in front of God, God knows all my imperfections. God knows I'm not perfect. In fact, I spend a lot of time on my knees apologizing to God for my imperfections. So my question to you, and, and I, I know we're supposed to be talking about blood covenant. But you, when you come, you pray. When you come, pray it up, right? You're asking God, give me a word. So the word might differ from what I have in my notes. But the point I'm making is that when you're faithful to the things of God, it doesn't matter that the seats are empty. Because God is not looking at them when he's blessing you. He's looking at you. Can I get an amen? amen. He's not looking at He's looking at you. And the other, thing, the other thing, he knows where everybody else is. He knows. He sees you in the house of God. He sees you involved in the things of God. He sees you worshiping and praising. When he's asking, who shall I send? You're one of those saying, send me, Lord. This is what you're saying when you're consistent with the things of God. When you're here on time for Sunday service, when you know that service starts at 11, 11, 15, somewhere around there, and you're there consistently at that time, why wouldn't you be blessed? Why can't you command the things that you want? Because the things of God are important to you. The things that you like are important to God. You know, we'll come and say, you know what, all my needs have been met. Now, somebody could hear that and say, yeah, here you go again, showing off or whatever. No. When God is doing something, he wants me to let you know so that you can be encouraged too. Whatever he did for me, he can do for you as well. So when somebody testifies, never look at them as if they're boasting, which we have a habit of doing in church a lot. When somebody's testifying, oh, look at him again. Look at her again. But if God is not blessing you, you don't have a testimony. And you don't have a testimony if you didn't have a test. Everybody went through a test. There's nothing that you're going through that is unique except that that all men have been through. So you can't say, why me, why me? There are things that came my way. And I could have easily said, why me? But I'll tell you what those things did. Those things brought me to the Lord. I didn't have a choice. I was caught between a rock and a hard place. When you got saved, if you just decided to do that of your own free will, God bless you. When I gave my life to the Lord, I was caught between a rock and a hard place. I had no choice. I was forced to. I'm grateful that I was forced to because I may not be where I am today. In my faith and in my understanding of who I am in Jesus, I may not understand that today if I hadn't been through those tests. So whatever tests you're going through, they're good. Thank God for them. Because they've caused you to rely on God 100%. And this is my testimony. I was caught between a rock and a hard place. I'm glad I went to Jesus. 
Because Jesus helped me out of my problem. That's my testimony. So you can't tell me Jesus doesn't live. If you, if you think Jesus doesn't live, you haven't tried him. And if you haven't tried him, my suggestion to you is it's better for you to go to, through life believing that God is real and get to the end of it and discover that he's not than to go through life believing God is not real and get to the end of it and find out he is real. Then you'll really be in trouble. But if you go through life believing that God is real and he's not, you still live a better life than those in the world who don't believe. Can I get an amen? You still live a better life. You're not out on the street wiling. You're not out there doing the things that other people are doing. No, you're trying to believe that God is watching you and watching your actions. So you have to behave yourself. So you don't find yourself doing things that are hazardous to your health because you believe you're covered by the blood. It's still better to follow God than those who are in the world. Because when the end comes, you and I know, because you and I have seen the presence of God in our lives. Can I get an amen? amen. We've seen. So we know beyond a reasonable doubt, we know where we're headed. And beyond a reasonable doubt, we also know where we could be headed if we didn't believe in Jesus. So, majority of people in this world are going to f miss their opportunity to go to heaven because they refuse to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. For you and I who have received him as our Lord and Savior, our lives are the best they could be. Can I get an amen? amen. Seriously. If Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you know that your life is much better than where you could have been. And I'm so happy when I see people who have so many options. I'm happy when I see somebody like Denzel Washington, for example, who has so many options. But the first thing out of his mouth is Jesus. People like that I respect because they don't have to. In fact, being a Christian, being a staunch Christian is not a, po it's not a popular thing. It's not popular at all. And the unadulterated word of God is not a popular thing at all. So those who have choices, who know that if they talk about God, they could hurt their careers, but still go ahead anyway and say, the reason why I'm here is because of God, and tell you what they believe regardless of what could happen. Those are people, look at them today, those are legends. Those are people to be respected. Let me just... Uh, speak a little bit on blood covenants. <laughs> you know, it's interesting that sometimes, you know, people don't believe that God speaks to you. People don't believe that God can speak to them. A lot of people go to church and God has not spoken to them or they don't think that God has. But you and I who are praying people, God is speaking to you. Just listen. Listen. And so a lot of times when I have something that I'm supposed to do and then I'm listening, I'm hearing something else. And it's really, really what I'm hearing is the, the very essence of why we're here. The very essence of why we're here is because Jesus is Lord. Can I get an amen? That's the essence why we're here. If Jesus is not Lord, we better pack up and go home right now. Jesus is Lord. Uh, in conclusion about covenants, uh, we, last week and the week before, we we're talking about the uh, covenant between God and Abraham. And we spoke about what God promised that he was going to do as a result of this covenant. And now, really quickly, I just want to go over some of the requirements that Abraham and his seed were required to accomplish as a result of this covenant. Abraham and his seed were required to walk before God. That was primary. You must walk before God. Abraham and his seed must be perfect. Perfect means integrity, truth, undefiled, upright. 
No, they must be. But even as I'm telling you that, we also know that there was a criminal who was crucified next to Jesus who lived a life of crime. And at the very last minute, he hadn't done any of these things, never been to church, never been to Bible study, never been to deliverance, never been to anything, never been to anything. But that day, he satisfied three things, and those things caused him to become a citizen of paradise. One of those things was he discovered the fear of God. While he was on the cross next to Jesus, he discovered, number one, the fear of God. The next thing he realized was that he was sinful, that he was wrong, that there was a reason why he was being crucified. He recognized his wrong. And then the very last thing that he did was he recognized that Jesus was Lord. When he recognized that and Jesus saw that, you know that I'm Lord, yes, you'll be with me in paradise. So we're required to be perfect. But even as I'm telling you that, because when somebody comes and says, all of us are supposed to be perfect, that's the reason why people leave the faith. Because they know they can't be perfect. They've tried, and they know they can't be perfect. That's the reason why many people leave the faith, because they know they can't be perfect. But I'd like to mention that criminal on the cross to temper things a little bit, so that you understand that there's three primary things that you must do. I'm sure there's other things Christ would like you to do. He'll tell you those yourself. But those are things that this criminal did who didn't know Christ. He did these three things. Next thing, he was in heaven. And that is our goal. Can I get an amen? In everything that we do, in everything that we do, our goal is to make it to heaven. And even as we were talking earlier, there's so many things on social media. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's saying this. Everybody wants you to listen to them as if they're speaking the gospel truth. But my advice to us is you develop your own communication with the Lord and hear from him yourself. And you can. A lot of people go to church, they don't believe that they can hear from God themselves. Their relationship is through their pastor. But listen, not all of us are going to heaven. Very few are. The Bible says that. And my prayer is that all of us are in that few. Let's believe, number one, in the Lord, that he is God. He's the son of God. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's judging the living and the dead. One day he's going to come back. And our prayer is that he's coming back for you and I. Can I get an amen? amen. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood that was shed on the cross. Thank you for the finished work on Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for our salvation. And our prayer this morning is that there's so many people saying all kinds of things, and a lot of us could be confused. What do I do? But we're coming to you, our God, because ultimately you're the one who's making the decision, not men. Men don't know anything. But ultimately, you're the one making the decision, and you're the one we need to listen to. You're the one we need to speak to. You're the one we need to come to so that you can show us the way. We pray, Lord, that you can take control of our thoughts, our actions, and our speech, everything that we do, so that we can please you, so that we can live lives that make you happy, so that we can live lives that cause you to write our names in your book, so that when that day comes, that you're coming back for us as well. That is our prayer today, Lord. And even as we get ready for our worship, we pray, Lord, that we will worship you in spirit and in truth. And we pray that we shall put a smile on your face. Because we know if we can put a smile on your face, it shall be well with us. That is our prayer today. So have your way even as we worship. All these things we ask and we pray in Jesus' precious name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Praise and worship. Amen. I'd like to invite the praise and worship team up to the altar, please. Musicians as well. Amen. To the Lord, a hand clap of praise this morning. How are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Have you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? 
so excited to be here. One of my favorite uh, verses comes out of Galatians 5, and it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. It says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And right now, we want to pray for the joy of the Lord to be in this place. How do you feel joyful this morning to be in the presence of God? His presence is here. We've had amazing instruction from our, our wonderful leader, Pastor Dan. And we just want to go before God just with excitement, with joy, as we're to worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. And that spirit is with enthusiasm. We worship him with enthusiasm, with our whole heart, with our spirit. So let's just go before our Lord in prayer, and then we'll go into praise and worship. Merciful Father God, we stand before you right now, Father God, looking at your power, looking at your presence, Father God, acknowledging your glory, acknowledging how incredible you are, Father God. Lord, we are nothing. Father God, we are nothing. We are like ships without a sail without you, Father God. And Lord, we just want to thank you for creating us, Lord, for giving us another day, giving us breath in our lungs, Father God, and helping us, Father God, helping us to be more and more like your son. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy, Father God. We thank you for sending your son, God. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for our sins. And we thank you that he is risen, amen. He is risen today and we can be joyful. We can have a new life in you, Father God, all because of your son, all because of the sacrifice he made and the fact that he is risen. So we pray for your spirit to be in this praise and worship, and we pray for you to just be in this house today. In Jesus' name, amen.
done great things, say, for he has done great things. He is done, for he has done great things. For oh, yes, say, for he has done great things. Bless his hope. together for the good of those who love the Lord. Let's just tell the Lord he is a good God this morning. But the name. 
other name but the name of Jesus. No 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 other name of Jesus. the Lord this morning. We are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We know that our Redeemer lives. Our Redeemer lives this morning. He has conquered the grave, and we can be excited. We can be joyful knowing that our Redeemer lives. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Our Redeemer lives.
shepherd us I'll rise with you I'm dancing on this mountain top to see my kingdom come say my say my alive this morning and we can be glad of that. Hallelujah. How many know that the lamb that was slain is alive? He's alive this morning, right? You're in the land of the living, amen. Our God is alive. Our Savior is alive. Forever he shall reign, amen. Song is super simple, it just says that he's alive. He's alive, he's alive, he's alive. Oh, the lamb that was slain, he's alive. Forever he shall reign. this morning. We can walk in his freedom. Amen. We've been made free because of him. And we can walk in your freedom, Jesus.
Tell me you're glad about that this morning. Say no more, say no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. This morning, Father God, we lift your name on high this morning. We lift your name on high this morning, amen. We lift your name on high this morning, God. Son is set free, is free indeed. We have the joy in the, of the Lord in this house this morning. Amen. We have you this morning, Father God. How many of you are excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? There's beauty in our brokenness. He's taken us and he's restored us. We thank you, Lord. There's 
worship our God this morning. Lift our hands and praise him. Say he is the most high God. You are the most high God. Yes, you are. You are the most high God. You are the most high. You are, you are, you are. Jehovah, you are the most high God.
Your name is Jesus. You're a very great God. Say, if he did it before, he can do it again. His name is Jesus. He's a very great God. If he did it before, he can do it again. His name is Jesus. He's a very great God. If he did it before, say, if he did it before, he can do it again. His name, his name is Jesus. He's a very Because 
pray. Heavenly Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Master of the Universe, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of health. We thank you for a sane mind. We thank you for your grace, which is sufficient for our needs. Thank you for your mercies that are renewed every morning. And thank you for your peace, which has surpassed our understanding. We thank you for your input into every aspect of our lives. We thank you for this opportunity to come and worship you this morning. And we pray, Lord, that even as we worshiped you, that, Father, you heard our praises. And we pray, Lord, that we made an, an impression on you this morning because we know that if we could put a smile on your face, that it shall be well with us. So we thank you today, almighty God. We thank you for our praise team. We thank you for an opportunity to come and worship. And we thank you for the blessings that are on the way. We thank you for our church, we thank you for our apostle, we thank you for our first lady, we thank you for our members. We pray today that you light the fire underneath our feet, light the fire underneath our church. We pray, Lord, that this will be a mighty center of worship in this part of town. We pray, Lord, that everybody will know about Christ Citadel and, the, and that your presence will be here. Father, that is the most important thing that we can pray for, is your presence, because your presence is what brings the people. We pray, Lord, that even as your presence comes down in this place, that everybody that comes to church who has a need, who has a, an infirmity, who has an illness, who has a sickness or a disease or something that is troubling them, something that is worrying them, we pray that they shall receive the healing here in the house of God in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that they will come and testify so that, Father, we can all know that your presence is here and that you're healing people just like you did in the Bible. Hallelujah. So we ask for more of you. ask for more of your presence. We ask that everything that we do in this place is guided by you so that you may receive the glory that you deserve. Have your way in this service. We pray that the word will be powerful this morning. And we pray that in everything that we do in this place, that you, O oh God, will receive the glory and the honor. All these things we ask and we pray in Jesus' precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. Put your hands together. Let's give God the praise and the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Also, please put your hands together for the gentleman on the drums. Thank you. God bless you. Did a great job. Thank you. Of course, our Minister of Music and the ladies, God bless you. Hallelujah. Really quickly, before I invite our apostle, my brother Ernest, you had a testimony? Thanks for Resurrection Sunday. Amen. God is good. God is good. Oh, man. Five weeks, uh, four weeks ago, last, last month. I don't know how to start it, but I'm going to tell you this. The devil attacked me so bad to the point I couldn't breathe. If I say I couldn't breathe, my lungs, I was told I had blood clot in my lungs. And based on what they were saying, they said, hey, dude, we don't know how you made it here. To start it, I'll make it very short. When I felt that I was coming to church that morning, just coming out of the bathroom, I couldn't even make a step. And I started praying. I said, Lord, wherever it is, I'm going to come out of this. So I called 911 first because now I felt the pain was getting too bad. And I was told, oh, probably 10, 15 minutes. And I live only five minutes from Kaiser. So I said, Lord, if you can help me to get into my car. I'm not going to wait for 15 minutes because this pain is unbearable. I got to Kaiser. I just parked my car in front of the door and left the door. And I told the security guy, can you take me to Kaiser, please? He said, what is wrong? I said, I don't know, but I can't breathe. To make things short, the Lord have healed me. This testimony here, Lord, this church here have the Lord in our hand. Everything we do here, don't take it, you know, like lightly. The power of the Lord is in this house. Amen. And I'm living, I don't even know how, what, I'm just had joy. Amen. So this resurrection there, people, just yeah, thank God. That's all what I can say. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter. Really quickly, I want to give a testimony also. Bear with me, Apostle. You know, we're praying people. Can I get an amen? amen. When you're a praying person, God answers your prayers. Uh, so my transmission went out. And I said, well, when your car, the transmission goes out, it's worth nothing. Because who's going to buy, it? you know, maybe 500 bucks at the junkyard. So I took it to a transmission person. He said, okay, your car, it's going to cost you about $1,400, $1,500. I said, ah, okay, all right. I don't have a choice. Do it. It's a couple of, you know, about a week and a half went by. And then I'm thinking about it. I need to call, find out what's going on with my car. And even as I'm thinking about it, I'm praying, Lord, I pray that he'll revise his estimate after he does the work. You know, I'm just praying this. I pray that he'll revise the estimate after he does the work, you know, because I want to pay less money than what I'd agreed to, right? So anyway, so he calls me. I'm coming to church on Friday. He calls me. He says, okay, your car is ready. Okay, you can pick it up. I would quoted you 14, 1500, yeah? I'm going to charge you 1100. The minute I heard that, I remembered the prayer. <laughs> the prayer. I just prayed it. I wasn't, you know. But guess what? God heard it and he did it. Yes. So there's a song that says everything to God in prayer. You know that song, right? Yes. Everything. Even that, I put it to God. Guess what? He answered it. I was like, my, I'm even surprised. I'm, I'm blown away. But I give God the praise. Yes. So the, the message there is, don't forget to pray. Whatever it is, you pray. And you'll see a result. Can I get a name in on that? All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Without any further ado, let's invite our apostle uh, to come and give us a word today. Uh, let's put our hands together for our man of God, Reverend Dr. Vincent Acosta. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Happy resurrection to all of you in the name of Jesus. Give a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Happy resurrection. Glory be to God. I want to welcome all of you to the house of God. I'm also thrilled to see Mr. and Mrs. Sinti in the house. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I know Mr. Sinti has a testimony. Mr. T has a testimony, and I think he's shy to give it. So, amen. But I think it's, we, we applaud God for the miracle to see this man standing. 
Amen. Amen. Sophie, we thank God for you, right? Amen. Praise God. He had a major surgery. Amen. But for him to be standing here, amen. And we thank God. Thank you, God. And also, you. oh, you want to come in? All right. This is in tune. The family spokesperson, amen. That's what comes in Good amen. morning, church. I just want to give God thanks for my husband, amen. this stubborn man. I want to give God thanks for him. He's very stubborn. He almost lost his life. He almost lost his life. And this is nothing to play with. When he was on the hospital bed, February 14th of 2024, and he came back down from surgery, I don't know. The doctor spoke to me. I was concerned because they took him up from 9.30 in the morning, and the surgery was supposed to be three to four hours. It lasted seven hours. The doctors, nobody came down to say anything to me, but we were sitting where his room was. We were just across from the nurse's station. I, as a nurse, I was thinking, should I go and ask the nurse what happened to him since nobody came and explained anything to me? And I said, you know what? The nurses can't even give that information. It would be something that has to come from the doctor. So I didn't go again. When they brought Kofi down, he was still like under the anesthetic. So the doctor asked me, um, you know, you're a nurse, and he just learned that day, or the day before that I took him to the hospital for the surgery that, I, that I'm a nurse, because all along he was going for his appointment, I wasn't going, and he wasn't really sharing anything with me. So I was glad I took it upon myself to go with him that day. And the doctor said to him, um, or said to me, because he was still under anesthetic, if he can remember, I'm only employing your husband to go home because you are a nurse. He's not in the condition to go home yet. He's standing there. He cannot, he should not be bending, twisting, and all that as of yet. As stubborn as he is, he's still trying to do what he was told not to do. However, I just want to give God thanks because the doctor said to me, his T3, he said three and five. I have the picture, his T3 spinal cord four and five this they replaced you know he could have been a cripple so he doesn't understand or pretend he doesn't understand the extent of what God have brought him through yes. so I'm not the one to be saying this testimony but I just want to give God thanks on his behalf because he's here today God, just thank you and just keep praying for us amen the two shall be one Amen. The two shall be one. Thank you, Mrs. Sinti. God bless you. We thank God. Amen. Serious, serious surgery. And let's put our hands together at our blood brother. Glory be to God in the highest. Woo! He's risen. He's risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Long time ago, Pastor Dan and I used to be Anglicans. <laughs> Hallelujah. I quit and you also quit. There's a song that is an appropriate song. It's called He Arose. We used to sing it in the Anglican church. I think as I quit, they took the song from me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you are gone, we are taking our song. Amen. I've been trying to sing it all morning. I came, I was checking whether Pastor Dan would really know how to sing it, but he, he too doesn't have it. They took their hymn, they took their song. But at least, you know, we know he's risen. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. For all of you here, for those that are watching us, hallelujah, we rejoice today Amen. with about 3.5 billion people on the face of God's planet Earth. Of the world's population of 8 billion who call themselves Christians. Amen. Amen. We constitute the Christendom family and we celebrate the resurrection of the Savior. Amen. We thank God that He is risen. Let's Amen. look unto the Lord in prayer. Mighty Jesus, we thank you. We bless and glorify you. 
We honor you and adore your holy name. We have come, mighty God, congregated here in your presence and your dwelling. Thanking you, mighty God, in Jesus' name, in this local house, that our Savior, our Christ, lives in perpetual glory. In Jesus' name, seated at the right hand of the Father, fulfilling prophecy, mighty God, on our behalf and our people of our faith. Come speak to us this morning. Words of hope and comfort and healing. Words of grace, mighty God. We bless you, mighty God, as we invite your gracious countenance upon this morning's service. Never permit me to state opinion and ideas, mighty God, that are not inspired by you. But let your words come, mighty God, to bless your people. To fulfill, mighty God, Jesus' name, expected anticipated promises that are stuck in your people's heart. We pray out anything of the enemy, mighty God, in Jesus' name. Any device, any scheme of the enemy. We uproot, root, and branch and cast into the deep of the sea. We invite your spirit and your presence to fill this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Please lift up your souls and wave it in the air. Put the shivers on the devil. Let the enemy know you are armed and very. Amen. Keep standing as we turn the Bible to Acts chapter 2. We read from verse 22 to 32. Acts chapter 2, reading from verses 22 to, to 32. Amen. We get it from the New King James Version. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep his hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, you will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on earth that he will place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised Jesus to life. And we are all witnesses of it. Please be seated. I'm speaking on the subject, Christ the King. Christ the King. Amen. Glory be to God. Brothers and sisters, though we celebrate, but there's always a reason why people celebrate certain things. But this is a celebration that is based on a promise. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 19 that if the Christ has not resurrected, then among all people we are the most miserable or pitiable. People should pity us. That we have believed in vain. We have trusted in vain. We have labored and worked and walked in vain. Hallelujah. Amen. If the Christ has not risen, then we are to be pitied. 
but he is risen. And this is important because the Bible declares, and there are things that also, beside that, the practical relevance and implication to us in the form of benefit that is there for us. Listen to the way he was Jesus of Nazareth, whom God accredited. Now, the why, the word Jesus of Nazareth. It's not an honorific accolade. Because when you look at it critically, it means a despised person from a despised place. Nazareth. Can any good thing come from Nazareth? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So you can also equate it what the Bible says in Acts in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22 to 26. Remember your calling, not many of noble birth are called. Not many that are wise according to the standards of the world. For God has chosen the foolish things of this world. To confound the wise, the weak things of this world to confound the strong, the base things of this world to confound the powerful. But that Jesus listened to his name. It was a name that God Himself sent the angels. He said, His name shall be called Jesus Christ, the Christ of God, the Hamashiach. The anointed one. Amen. Amen. Of God. And this is very important. Because earlier on there was a type of him. Joshua. Jehoshua. Which means Yahweh is salvation. Yeshua. Which means he shall save. Amen. Now the point is this. If his name must reflect his office and work, how can he die? Because if he's a, there's, there's also see the singularity of the attribute. If Jesus, the Savior, is to die, then we are all in trouble. Because if your Savior is dead, you are doomed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You are doomed. But this adds to the fact that he cannot die. Praise the name of Jesus. A man accredited because those are the things that the Bible said the Messiah will do. In Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18, the Bible says, As for me and the children you are giving unto me, we are for signs and wonders. And this is a messianic word, prophecy. Acts chapter 8, you see, it's called in the, in, the, in the New Testament. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and he went about doing good, healing all who were what, oppressed of the enemy, because God was with him. He went about doing good. Everywhere he went, there was no disappointment. Except in his own town, Nazareth. You know, when people are too familiar with you, sometimes they don't take you serious. They start exciting, oh, we know his mother, we know his father. Is he not a carpenter? Hallelujah. Because according to Deuteronomy chapter 6, fathers must teach their sons what they do. So if your father is a carpenter, then you become a carpenter. You know, the sons of Zebedee, their father was a fisherman, so they were fishermen. Are you understanding me? The father teach their children their trade. So the people misconstrued them. Say he's a carpenter. He cannot be a savior. We know him. Though we've heard the wonderful things that, you know, he's saying and the thing that he has done, but he's a carpenter. He cannot be a savior. But the Bible says God has accredited him. 
In the same way that sometimes you know that you know that you get it, but society will not give you, but the point is you don't force issues with society, unbelieving society. That's how Jesus came from a Nazareth of a despised place and was a despised man from a despised place. You too may have your fair share of being despised and looked down. But the point is this, God controlled the error and the destiny of all men. You didn't get it. Because every destiny has its error under the sun. Do you understand? That's why the Bible said there are times and seasons for every purpose of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There is a time and a place and a moment that your moment will come. You got it, but society will not give to you because you are from a despised place and the despised matter to your error is coming. Amen. So now the Bible declares that it was necessary that the Savior, all this was an argument for this, that the Savior should come and die because of God's law. The day you eat of this fruit, you will die. And death comes to us in three dimensions. So sometimes people say, that, why are you saying he was going to die? Why are we living? There are three definitions of death. Death itself is defined as separation from purpose. There are people who are alive, they are filthy rich, but they are separated from God's purpose. We see that this person was rich and things, and later on something tragic happened, and the person died, died. A very miserable death. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. This person invented this and did this, and then a the person died. Miserable death. Did he know Jesus as Lord and Savior? I'm coming to a place that tonight or today, all of you better make sure that you get a new insurance Amen. for your life. Amen. And then there is a death where we see that the person is dead. Separation, disintegration, body, soul, and spirit. The tripartite constitution of every man. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 23. Every man has a body, soul, and spirit. It doesn't matter who you are, rich, poor, or whatever. We all have it. Because, let us see this. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, out of God made man out of sin. And he breathed the breath of life. Genesis chapter 2 7. God will breathe that breath of life into anything and made man. So man became a living soul. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 17 verse 20 says, out of one blood, out of one blood, he made all nations of men. So please, don't tell me Akosa doesn't speak French. Akosa doesn't speak Latin. Akosa doesn't speak Hausa. Akosa doesn't speak Kiswahili. Amen? Amen. We all came from one blood. But I've got news for you. Because that blood, the two people, that the whole world, it doesn't matter whether you come from the North Pole or the South Pole. Or you come from uh, wherever. Out of one blood, he made all nations of men. And the Bible says in Leviticus 17 verse 11, the life of every creature is in the blood. Amen. But this blood, by the common, artful, subtlety of Satan, he attacked this couple, the foremost couple, because he knew the law says the day you eat of this, you will die. 
So this sentence is upon all humanity because we all committed what is called the original sin. So out of one man, sin and death came into the world because the power of death is sin. There is law in our books. Death sentence is in our books. But innocent people cannot be sentenced to death. It is only the guilty who have been tried by the court or tribunal of the appears and have been found to be what? Culpable of the crime preferred against them. So we stand guilty of the original sin. But I wasn't there. I wasn't there. You know. There's something you know more than God. You know more than God. Don't put on a, your Sunday shine and come and look so resplendent. Amen. Amen. God knows what, where you were last night. Amen. God knows why you slept late because you were on the phone gossiping about somebody. <laughs> You are not praying. You are not having intercession. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Cutting someone to pieces. Same tongue that speaks in tongues. Amen. Someone cut in front of you and you and your words were not in tongues. Blessing the person. That was a different tongue. So amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Forgotten that the wages of sin is death. That is why, in his own law, God also made provisions that there will be enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. Why, why the woman? Because we are all, we have tripartite constitutions. It is only through a woman only through a woman that we can get this. Because the part of you and I that doesn't die is the soul. Amen. And for you to come to live on this earth, you need a woman to give you this. This body. Amen. Women, applaud yourselves. You don't know who you are. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You need a woman. So the Christ has to come. Because the blood before sin has come. And we need, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 20, 28, to shepherd the sheep. That he said he bought with his own blood. His own blood. This time quoting God, saying, I for this with my own blood. And if we have the blood of God, then let us see this dynamic. Because Jesus once said something in Luke chapter 16 when he talked about the rich man and poor Lazarus. It's in the book. And it talks about this rich man who lives. Sometimes now you see, so someone, someone can be so wealthy and still be separated from purpose. He lives sumptuously. Every day was a party for this man. And the Bible says one day he died. And his soul. Angels came for his soul. Lazarus, the poor man who ate the crumbs from his table, also died. And his soul was taken by angels. So it means that in the natural, we can have differences. Poor people. But no soul is ever poor. The impoverished soul is more based on your choices. The choice that you make. What am I talking about? The only side of the man. The real man is his soul. It's not his body that I'm standing here with. 
This body, because I'm supposed to live on this earth and fulfill my assignment, so I need a, God needed the permission of my mother to use said to give me this so that I can fulfill my assignment. But when my time is done, since this comes from the dust, it goes to dust. There's no soul that lives in the grave. The soul of a person doesn't live in the grave. By the dynamic that Jesus opened to us in Luke chapter 16, before Christ, there was a place, Shuel or Hades. But there are two compartments according to what Jesus said. There is a place called Abraham's Balsam. Abraham's Balsam. That was where Lazarus was taken. That's where all the Old Testament saints were in that place called Shua because all men must die and all men must be raised by Jesus. Amen. All men. We see this dynamic even enforced in Mark chapter 9 on the mountain of transfiguration that Jesus Christ, the Bible says, Moses and Elijah were standing. They were there in person, but they were representing a, a biblical fact. Moses standing for the law because Moses was the lawgiver who gave the law to the people. Remember in Exodus chapter 32, when Moses came down from the mountain, the people were, and the, the tablets in, in righteous indignation, he threw the, the tablets. And then later on, he prays that God said, now you make your own tablets and climb the mountain and bring it to me. And he did it. And God gave him the law. The Pentateuch, the five books, Moses. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. When you look at them, you know, in the Jewish faith, the Tanakh constitutes the law, the prophets, and the writings, which is also prophetic. The writings you know, the Psalms, the Proverbs, and all that. This constitutes. So when Nathaniel was called to come and see me, Jesus, the, 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 in John chapter 1 says, come and see Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the man in whom Moses in the law and the prophets, because when he was coming, Jesus said, this is a true Israelite. In whom there's no, which means that he's a man who know the law. And he said, can any good thing come from Nazareth? Because it is true. There's nothing prophetic that said that Jesus will be born in Nazareth. Jesus must be born in Bethlehem. Because David or from Bethlehem. Praise God. Amen. So the Bible tells us the soul of the man, which is important, that lives on forever because there is nothing in the realms of the spirit dies. And that is why our Christian worship and work is important. Nothing dies in the realms of the spirit. And that is what has necessitated hell being made. That is the third death. And now that people are going to hell to die, they will be there because they will not die. And that is the only place God can keep people who are evil away from him. But then, the Bible declares, when Christ died, in Ephesians chapter 4, let me be taking the first Peter chapter 3 verse 19, he went to Hades and then proclaimed to those in Hades that the work of redemption has done. Yeah. He, he came to say, that I have accomplished, I have fulfilled the work. But then the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, 
Listen to this, brothers and sisters. The same who ascended is the same who descended. And when he ascended, he took captivity captive. Who are these captivities? Because all those Old Testament saints who were in the place that is called Abraham's bosom, he carried them with him. That is why when the person dies now through Christ, the soul of the person, 1 Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, to be absent in the body is to be present. Can you say it? To be absent in the body. But if you are absent in the body, which means the body is buried, mm -hmm. but there's a part of you that still lives, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the soul goes to heaven. Amen. Awaiting the dead. When the archangel will blow his trumpet. Hallelujah. Amen. According to first. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. And the Bible says, the dead in Christ will rise first. Rise with what? With the glorified body that Christ Jesus rose from the grave with. For the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 23, that he has become the first fruit from the grave. So, when the archangel blows at them, then the, the, the souls of the departed will enter into their bodies, the glorified body, and then they will arise. Amen. That's what the Bible says, and they will all change. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We will all change. Even though that are alive, we will change. And then we have the thing is, if you have your body, why do you need any change? You are changing to her, the glorified. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. That is not susceptible to aging. Ladies, I know you will love this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. You don't need any makeup to look anything. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, this is God having made. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can live to be two trillion years and you are still like a 14 year old walking around. That is the real forever 13 years old. Hallelujah. You see me, you won't even believe my age. Hallelujah. Maybe I'm a forever seven year old. Amen. Body. Amen. <laughs> I like it that way. Amen. The year, the body that is not susceptible to any kind of problems and conditions. It is a real you, but it you have changed. Hallelujah. As the Christ came with that body, he still had his scars, but it was a different body. This is what we have to understand. The promise that stands for us. But why do we need this body? Because when the rapture happened, takes place. We are not just going. We are going to get our crowns, people, according to the job that we did. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You better serve. Tell somebody, you better serve well, right? Amen. Amen. Better serve well. What way is God talking about? He's talking about how many souls you want. But some of you, you don't win souls, but you cost God's souls. God is also making note of it. Amen. Your gossip has changed somebody out of the church. Your mean behavior has made somebody left the kingdom. Your attitude has driven people from the church. God is taking note of it. Amen. Bible says in Exodus 32, 32 to 24, Moses told God, Blot me out of my boots. God said, I'm not going to blot you out of my boots. It is people who have sinned against me that are blot out of my boots. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Verse 17 to 20. The disciples came and said, Lord, in your name, demons were subject to us. Say, do not rejoice because demons were subject to us. Rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. If someone is writing a book about you, he has to say something nice about you. 
Are you a nice person? Are you doing nice things in the kingdom? <laughs> or some people, they have the spirit of confusion. Any type of chaos in the church, you can trace it to them. <laughs> Any kind of gossip, you know where it's coming from. Their church, Twitter, church, Instagram, church, NBC, CBS, SS. <laughs> Hallelujah. One person church network. Hallelujah. Everything knows everything. The antenna is in every body's house. Have you heard? You know, he and his having a, the husband, and they, they, they are having a problem. Their daughter is acting up. Their son is acting up. Everything comes from you. God permits you to know so much so you can pray so much. Amen. Not to gossip so much. Pray for one another. When was the last time you fasted for someone? Because the brothers or the sisters' marriage is on shaky ground. That somebody's daughter is acting up and the sister has come to you. I don't know what to do with her anymore. She's a teenager. She doesn't listen to me. Somebody's son is going, acting up. And the sister has come and confided in you. She said, let us, I'm taking time to fast for you. When is the last time you had somebody going through some hellish experience and you prayed? Let me tell you this. Jesus said, we are in resurrection, but I have to let it all. I have to tell you the facts. Judgment will start in the church. Don't be waiting for if I were you. Knowing you haven't done much for the kingdom. Don't even pray for rapture to happen. Because rapture, the church is going to be judged. The judgment of the church is not judgment that will send people to hell. But judgment that some people will not be happy with. Romans, Hebrews chapter 12. Amen. Are you liking what I'm saying? I want to put meat on the resurrection for its practical meaning to you and your work. Amen. It's not about Jesus is risen, he's been there. But we have to get there. Amen. But this is the choices and the behavior that will get us there. So look, Romans, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, it says, since we got set a great cloud of witnesses besetting us, let us lay aside every sin and weight that easily besets us. And let us run the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the prize that was set before him. Amen. There is a prize set before us, people. Amen. There's a prize. People are getting ready for the Olympic Games. At this time we are here, we don't know what they are doing. Training, lifting weights, trying to, doing all kinds of, you know, rigorous exercises. Because they are preparing for a prize. So when the church gets raptured, the race is going to be judged. Maybe God called you to be an evangelist. God called you to be an intercessor. God called you to be a giver. God called you maybe into maybe the presbytery. God called you and gave you some assignment. You were ordained for it. You were licensed for it. God gave you a gift to use. Talent. We are going to be judged. God is going to judge the race. And it is the race, as you run it, that will determine the crown you will get. We see in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, and the apostle Paul says, what? I have what? Finish. He says, I've fought the fight. I've finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now I'm awaiting the crown that will be given to me. 
This is a man who went through everything, could have quit ministry, but didn't. Amen. He says he's now waiting the crown. Ministry has not been easy for me. <laughs> don't look as if this guy, you know, I wish. You don't know the scars. The scar that I bear is not the only one on my face. I carry more wounds and weight, scars. That is not visible. That I thank God. But before I got cut and had wounds, he was pierced for me. Amen. He bled for me first. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember that. Jesus. He was a sacrifice for me first. So if I'm called to make any sacrifice, amen, a true human law determines that one good turn deserves another. So brothers and sisters, it is about where the soul ends. All this. No religion can say that their leader, their founder, and I say with humility, I'm not tooting my horn. Because in my Bible college, you have to study about other religions, not to practice them, but to know what makes them believe what they believe. When it comes to matters of that life and life hereafter, they have this fuzzy, convoluted, because they don't know. We are the only people that our Savior died and rose again. Amen. Not in the spiritual, in the natural. This thing that Peter was saying, 50, it was 50 days after the crucifixion of Christ. That Peter was making this statement and asked her to do 50 days. Hallelujah. Amen. Because Jesus was our Passover lamb. 50 days that he was making this. And just before he was there when Jesus ascended literally. He was there when the angels came and said, men of Galilee, why are you looking up? This same Jesus you've seen taking up will come back the same way you've seen him go. As I wind up, I want you to know we are the ones who can say with grateful certainty Philippians 3.20 that our citizenship is of heaven. Amen. And that is where we await our Savior. Amen. Nobody can say that. No religion. We await our Savior. Amen. The Son of God who love us, Galatians 2.20, die for us and rose again and seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. He lives. He's not dead. Amen. And that is why because the person, a dead person cannot respond to his name. He gave his name to us in the Great Commission, Mark chapter 16, verse 17, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. And in Acts chapter 2, Mark 16, 20, and he worked with them, confirming his word with signs and wonders. Amen. We, you heard the testimonies. Amen. Our brother couldn't breathe. He called upon the name of the Lord. Amen. And he got his miracle. Amen. Pastor Dan gave his testimony. Mrs. Sinti talked about it. Said, there are so many of you here who have been healed or delivered by the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It attests to the fact that he lives. Giving glory to the Lord, he reigns. We give glory to the Lord, he reigns. He reigns, he reigns, Jesus reigns. We give glory to the Lord, he reigns. Stand up, please. We give glory to the Lord, he reigns. We give glory to the Lord, he reigns. Oh, he reigns, he reigns, Jesus reigns. We give glory to the Lord, he reigns. Oh, he reigns, he reigns, our 
Savior reigns, we give glory to the Lord. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. We Jesus, you reign forever and ever. Thank you, you died for us. Yes. But it was impossible. <laughs> so many people, people have died since Adam. Even Methuselah, Methuselah, 969 years died. And he's still in the grave. Prophets, generals, presidents, emperors, founders of great religions, they died. But our Savior Jesus Christ died and rose again. For the Bible says it was impossible. That was able to put his icy hand on all mortal souls, but not when he came to our Savior Jesus. Not when he came to Christ the Lord, uh, impossible. Because he's the one who is destined one day in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15 verse 20 it says to sentence death to hell. How can the judge of death be killed by death? Hallelujah. Death has met us much in the Savior. And as for us, the Bible says, Death, where is your pain? Where is your stink? Death has been swallowed up in victory because the, the sentence of death is no more. The blood has atoned for it. So it makes us untouchable. So we want that we will in the human, but it is a glorious transition. To be with Christ. Yes. So we bless you Jesus. Thank you. We can never say thank you enough. Yes. Blessed be your holy name. And if you are watching us. And you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Or maybe in a bustling state. Somebody who offended you. And who left the church in anger. I want to extend the right hand of fellowship to you to come back. Come back to salvation. Come back to eternity in glory with the Savior. But please repeat these words after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of all my sins and I ask you to forgive me. I am truly, truly sorry. For all the sins that I've committed. I ask you to forgive me. This has come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. With all my heart. I believe. That Jesus Christ alone. Is the only begotten son of the father. And that he. Who knew no sin took my place on the cross. Christ Jesus died for me. He rose again on the third day and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Thank you that I'm born again and I'm saved by grace. Heavenly Father, we pray in Jesus so we know the angels are celebrating. Luke chapter 15 verse 7. The confession of your people. We pray in Jesus' name. Thy the Holy Spirit lead them to places in the kingdom that through our purpose that they will be fed, taught, sublimely nourished and nurtured in the truth of God's word, that according to your word in 1 Peter 2, 2, that they will grow thereby. We bless and glorify you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. If you did respond to this altar call, please. We want to encourage you. Look for a Bible teaching church wherever you are watching us from and go and worship. Otherwise, you can call us. We are one church in six places. That, you know, Call us. And if you also happen to be living in close proximity to any of these campuses, which is our actual branches, we are standing right on the fellowship to you to come and worship with us, join us. Bring your friends and family, people in your immediate second friends or close associates to come and worship the living God with us. Amen. So please come worship with us. Otherwise, if you're also watching us, maybe from another state, another city, another town that, you know, that is far from us, or even another country, we encourage you to look for a Bible teaching church closest to you so that you can go and worship the living God there. Amen? Amen. Praise God. If you also need help, we have a network of churches all over the United States and even some outside. Call us and we'll be able to help you locate a place of worship for you. God bless you so much. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Christ was the famous giver. Time for us to come and give. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our church, amen, has no source of funding. Or revenue except what to give out of your free will volition. We don't superimpose no coerce or twist arms. Amen. But Father, we encourage you to give as the Bible says. Your first roots, your tight, special donations, and regular offerings. These are our ways of giving. Please, you can give. You may we give you multiple choice app. You can check, you know, on the monitor. We got multiple choice app. You can give online, ChristCenterLA.org. Or the car shop with this Christ Citadel, the dollar sign with Christ Citadel. Or you can test to 833-503-1274. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Multiple choice. Choose one and send in your donation. Or you can, if you are here, you can swipe your debit and credit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You lift up your hand. Our brother will walk to you. You swipe your debit and credit and be a blessing. Or behind every chair, there are, there are envelopes. Amen. Amen. You can pick one. Please make sure you put in your donation, but write your name and current address legibly in front. And our sisters, amen, will come to receive from you. Let us all stand up. Let's invite Pastor Frank, amen, to come, hallelujah, and receive our tithes and offering. For Let's all stand. The Lord has a cheerful giver, amen. So worship the Lord. Let's look at Pastor Amen. Let's give a round of applause for this powerful yeah. message in the name of Jesus. The apostles say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son to whoever believes in him shall never perish but have eternal life. He is risen. So let's give a round of applause to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Our God. Amen. So let's bow down our head and pray. Father God, thank you. Yeshua Amashia, thank you. Jesus Christ, thank you. We pray that the resurrection power of this day shall mark the beginning of something great in our lives. As we are being obedient and sowing this seed, we pray for abundance. We pray for favor. We pray for greatness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Amen.
If you still want to, our brother to come to you, want to give you your money by swipe, just lift up your hand and you'll come around. Amen. We want to recognize those that are here for the first time. Any first time in our midst this morning? Anybody here for the first time? Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. Keep standing, keep standing. Amen. Let someone. Well, can God bless you so much? Praise God. I know you were sitting by Sister Michaela. Amen. You came with the angel, right? And then, <laughs> praise God. God bless you so much. Please, at the end of the service, amen. amen. This lady that is coming to see you, amen, will want to, he has a gift for you. She'll give to you, right? Our Sister Jennifer. Glory be to God. Amen. Thank you so much. Praise the name of Jesus. Have you been here before? God bless you. Thank you very much. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to thank all of you for coming to worship with us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Please, we are back to our normal schedule. The conference is over. Hallelujah. Yeah. Remember success. To praise God. Amen. We are back to our normal schedule. Amen. Amen. So please, if anybody... Dr. Gloria, please come here. Amen. 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 Our sister, uh, Pastor Jacqueline, is still, you know, vacationing, but she'll be back on Tuesday. Turn around. Let us see. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Dr. Gloria is deputizing for her. Amen. So if anybody wants to maybe have a, um, um, see me on Tuesday, I'm back to the office on Tuesday, Please, either you call the office line or at the end of the service, talk to Dr. Gloria. Amen. 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 And she will make an appointment. Amen. For me to see you. Amen. Amen. But Pastor Jacqueline will be back. Amen. Glory be to God. We thank God for uh, she needed the match that rest. Amen. Amen. Please, also, we are back to our schedule. Amen. Bible study on Wednesday, 7 to 8. And also miracle service on Friday. Amen. The ladies are having going to have um, a health fair. Amen. Amen. This is health awareness. Amen. Amen. Hello, ladies. Amen. Where are the women here? Amen. And all these ladies are Christ Citadel sisters. Amen. Praise God. Um, First Lady Susan Nemo of our um, of our San Fernando Valley Church, Amen. The, the wife of Pastor Pastor Michael, Amen. amen. She works at um, Cedar Sinai here, Amen. amen. Um, Kate Wharton, who is a nutritionist, Amen. She is going to. This woman knows so much about food, Amen. You want to hear from her before you eat, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Which food is good for the body? Which food is medicinal and things like that? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. And our sister Carrie Mensa, amen. amen. She works at UCLA. Amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So all these lead, we thank God. Let's applaud. God has blessed our church. Amen. amen. Our church, we are blessed with doctors and so many people. Amen. amen. Glory be to God. So these women who have been working in the lo for the longest in the medical field, amen. And everything is Zoom, so ladies, you don't have to go anywhere. You call, amen. 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 You can ask them any question. This is ladies' seminar, men, stay far away from it. A billion, a billion miles away, amen. Don't even dead each drop, hallelujah. Let ladies do their thing, hallelujah. If any man is in breach, call me, right? <laughs> or call Pastor Dan, amen. <laughs> Stay away from the ladies, amen. Let them conference, amen. Have your ladies' business. So it's ladies talk on Saturday, 20th April, 11 a.m. is the Zoom. So you can be anywhere and you can call and then praise God. Amen. Excuse me. Uh, there's, a, there's a found cell phone, amen. Amen. Is it not mine? I think it's mine. It's mine. Bring it. Let me see. 
You look, it's mine. Oh, mine. How come you got my phone? <laughs> it's found in the bathroom. Oh. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you for resurrection power, Jesus. Hey. My phone died and has I been resurrected. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The phone was talking to me telepathically, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now you better stay put, right? Don't go anywhere. <laughs> so thank God, all of you. God bless all of you. Amen. Let us stand up and receive the benediction. Thank you so much. Everlasting Father and Golden King, we thank you. We praise you so very much in Jesus' name for the word of God and for the salvation to mankind. Thank you, Jesus, for the resurrection. That alone is the exclamation sign to our faith. We praise you. We bless you. We magnify you that the Christ is risen. We praise and glorify you in Jesus' name. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The blessing Father, let your gracious countenance on you and give you his peace. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling, to present you before his presence without blemish, the only wise God, but your dominion and majesty for us. The Lord my God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you. Happy resurrection to all of you. Amen. <clears throat>